With Crimean flags raised high, Soviet-style music about Simferopol is blasted out to Ukrainians coming to a local polling station in this capital city. Hundreds of thousands of Crimeans cast their vote on whether the Crimean Peninsula should become part of Russia or become more autonomous while still united with Ukraine. Vladimir Iferich voted for the peninsula to return to Russian control. Crimea was given to Ukraine in 1954 by Soviet Union leader Nikolai Khrushchev. I don't want to vote to be part of a state like Ukraine. I want to vote for a place that can protect me. I'm going to vote for Russia because I was born in Crimea in the days when Crimea was part of Russia. And I think that's a reasonable decision to go back to Russia. We can say only when the voting process is finished, but judging on people's mood, we're pretty sure most people are going to vote for Russia. Dutryanko insisted the referendum voting was fair and transparent. Everything is quiet here. Please tell the truth about what's happening here. Nobody forced anyone to vote. Everyone is free to vote how they want. But Human Rights Watch monitors cited concerns that the presence of Russian militias throughout Crimea would make it difficult for people to be comfortable voting. Indeed, Russian armed personnel carriers were parked on street corners. Referred to as aliens because of their green uniforms, the Russian troops held positions throughout Crimea. Groups of Cossacks brought from Russia roamed the streets too. Joined by local self-defense forces, they've beaten up foreign and local journalists. Some Ukrainians in the area call them stray dogs, looking to pick a fight. The Russians have also surrounded and taken ground inside Ukrainian military bases throughout the peninsula. Voter Gunadi Blinsky doesn't mind the Russian military presence. Actually, we don't experience any inconvenience with Russian troops here. Yesterday we were at the theater, today we're going to the concert, so no problem at all. In the town of Bakhchisarai, just a half-hour drive south of Simferopol, people are boycotting the election. This is the historical heartland of the ethnic Tatars, who make up about 12 percent of the Crimean population. If the diplomatic efforts fail, obviously some Tatars will join the insurgency and run a guerrilla war. But they aren't ready at the moment. We have no armed units, no self-defense, nothing at all, to run an armed resistance. Regardless, he says the referendum is illegal. I'm pretty sure that despite all the fraud and fake results of the referendum, the results will never be recognized in the world. One local Tatar who didn't vote said he's very upset with Russian aggression. My own opinion is that the first thing to happen is that Crimea will be like a gray zone because the world is not going to recognize Crimea as part of Russia. So I'm also afraid that the fuel supply, power and food supply from Ukraine may also be disrupted. Osmanov said his parents were forcibly deported from Crimea by Joseph Stalin in 1944, along with about 200,000 other Tatars. They're scared it'll happen once more. But I'm ready to fight and never let anyone expel us again. Back in Simferopol, voter Gunadi Blinsky said he expects Crimea to be part of Russia once the results are announced on Monday. Now spirits are getting high, because now we can see the future and protector of the world and Crimea. From Crimea, I'm Zach Bador, reporting for War is Boring.